Hey guys, welcome to Emuelic Masterclass. I'll be your host today, Emu Chicken. Today we're gonna look at sorting your controls. I don't know about you, but I find games unplayable when the buttons aren't quite set up right. This will work on the Super Console X, the Retro Station, and actually anything that has Emuelic set up on it. Today we're gonna use the MUB, the HK1 box, but it should work fine on one of these things too. If RetroArch is running in the background, you should be golden brown. First, we will configure your controller from the main front end. So we're gonna press start, go down to controller settings, configure the controller, then hold a button on the said controller. Now you're gonna set it up to be used in RetroArch. The D-pad directions on this pad will be seen as hat and the analog will be seen as axis. You can skip any of these if needed, but make sure you have something set as hotkey. The select button can also be used here. Now that the box can see your controller, let's try a game out. So A, B and C are working as I expected. Perfect. For player two, I'm gonna use the Hori fighting stick. So up, down, left, right will be the stick. Start selects. Then I'm gonna bind these as well as I can. If needed, you can use a button as a trigger. And then for all these, I'm gonna skip. Always remember to add the hotkey. We can play now, but it's a guess to us which controller is player 1 or player 2. So if we bring up the menu, go to controller settings, and then input P1, we're going to set that to the gamepad. P2, this will be the stick. Then we can play. Playing a game when controls are messed up is plain not fun. We can reconfigure these if a game uses a lib retro core. If you push hotkey and north, then get a menu, we should be good. So we go down to controls, and then move to port 1 controls. That's for player 1, port 2 is for player 2, and so on. Here we can set the controller up for this particular game. On the left we have the physical representation of the pad we have in our hand. So this red button here, we look on the right, is set up to medium punch. That is just plain stupid. We're going to set it up to medium kick. Alright. Now this here, the green button, this should be light kick. The one on top here, medium punch. And the blue button, light punch. Next two I want to set are L and R buttons. So here, this is the L. I want this as strong punch. And on the right, R, I want strong kick. You can set other buttons too. This is the left trigger and right trigger, but that's up to you. Now the controls are set, we want to save these settings. So back out once, and let's take a look at the save remap file options. The first here will save the controls to be used with any game using the currently open core, which is Flycast. The second option will save these controls for any game that is within this ROMs folder, which is Naomi right now. The third option will save controls for this game only. I'm going to choose the second option, so this will apply for all Naomi games. And I'll also save using the third option. This one will override the above setting if present. Let's back out, press quick menu, and then resume game. We can see here that all the buttons are working fine. If you have friends, or want to keep them at least, make sure to remap player 2 also. 
So this game's good. Let's quit out and try some others. Here's another Naomi game, Marvel vs. Capcom 2. The controller settings I saved for the folder carried over to this game. So everything is set perfectly. Now for some Dreamcast. When playing a game using an analog stick with an analog trigger, Daytona does work well. But if you don't have these, well, we need to rebind. Let's go back to port 1 controls. We're then going to change our D-pad to be an analog stick. So let's change this to analog X minus. And then for the right button we're going to choose analog X plus. It's very sensitive but it's working. Now we need to rebind the accelerator. Our red button is unbound. You see the dashes, so I'm going to change that to be hmm, our trigger. And now we can play. Three, two, one, you can buy and brakes if you like. You can also change sensitivity in the Daytona options. How about this one? Killer Instinct Gold. Button config. A whole lot of nothing. So back to the quick menu we go. Right, so the N64 controller can be held many ways. It's very difficult to have one setting work with every game. Well, it's pretty much near impossible. For this game we need the yellow buttons, right now it's set as C1 and C4, but they're in the brackets, which means we need to hold our C button's hotkey every time we want to use it. So what we can do is go down to the bottom, where we have C buttons. There's four of them, it'd be north, south, east, west. Okay, it's not picking that one up. Let's change it to a different option. Still nothing. Okay, how about X? We are good. So let's remap the buttons. This one, this one, this one, and then this one. Ah! Same problem. I'm gonna change this one to X plus. Alright, and we're good. Game on. N64 playing perfectly. If you remap controls, remember to save. To the next system, Commodore Amiga. This is running Pue, as Amiberry is not Libretro, and playing a platform game without a jump button is horrible. So I'll select our green button to be up. <laughs> up, yeah. And maybe the blue button we can select as fire. We hope you enjoyed this video and learned something. Please like, subscribe as always. And if you'd like to support our work, we do have a Patreon. A big thank you to all these lovely people who mentally support us while we pull apart Pandora boxes and help others in the world of emulation. We run the Emuelic Masterclass if you'd like to continue your journey. Or if you just want to come hang out, please join us in our Discord, which is in the description below. This has been Amy Chicken of Team Pandori, and now's your time to go play Turrican 2. Ta-ra!